One thing that's very important to remember is that in any charging document, the victim is the state. So it's the people of the state of Kentucky versus Sarah Jones. So you could almost remove the victim because in the criminal law, the victim is believed to be the state. Is that correct? That's correct. Understand, the victim in any criminal case is seen as the state in which the crime was committed. So when you look at it with under through that prism, you understand that if the alleged victim in the case or the complaining witness in the case does not come forward, the state is still compelled to proceed against the defendant. And the idea is because the defendant is still an ongoing danger to the people of the state of Kentucky. Because she's going to go into your houses, climb into your windows, and rape Sleep your teenage with your boys. teenage sons. Yeah. So yep. in her lock, them up, lock them up in her chiller outfit. This is a word to the wise. We've talked about social media. We've talked about how social media can become a strong piece of evidence against a defendant in a criminal case. And in a case like this, don't sext to underage students. <laughs> <laughs> That's the takeaway from this entire the takeaway, piece. Takeaway, teenagers, don't sext your teachers. <laughs> The teenagers is fine, <laughs> unless you want to get them in trouble. It doesn't matter if you want to press charges right. or not, the state will do it for you. Because if you're under 18, strict liability doesn't matter. You cannot in, be involved in any sexual relationship with a minor. Period? Period. True? End of story. Yep. End of story. This is a very important point that we want to raise about social media. You really have to be careful because what was what was not available 20 years ago or even 10 years ago in, uh, to be used against you in courts of law really is. So when you talk about the Twitters and the Facebook and the texting, those are very strong pieces of evidence that prosecutors and police are using against criminal defendants. Do you, I mean, you see such as, uh, this is something that we come across every day, and that is you see people's Facebook pages and they're used, you know, they, we talk about how, how victims of crime, the, the, the assailant knew they were out of town because they posted pictures of themselves in Hawaii and said, we're all on a big family vacation. But the opposite is also true, which is they're using their Facebook as ways to put them at the scene of the crime. Is that correct? Beware technology. That's all I have to say. We are in a world where technology is evolving very, very quickly. And sometimes we don't think about the ramifications of what we're sending out into the world, be it via uh, something that you send in what you might think is a private text message or a private email, um, or if it's something that you understand that you're saying in a more public forum like Facebook. Be aware. Technology is not a protected sphere. It is a new frontier of that just opens the door wide for law enforcement and prosecutors to be able to track you, to be able to know what you're up to. And there is no difference if a threat is in writing as opposed to orally made to somebody. It is the same criminal consequence. So when you make a statement or when you're angry at someone and you send them a text like, I could kill you, be careful because that's a criminal threat. It's a strike in California, it can land you in state prison.